Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, Mommy Loves to Read. I'm Olivia and thank you for joining me today. So guys, I'm so excited. It has been forever and a day since I made a video. And that's because I started school and things have been really busy. But today is Friday. Praise the Lord. Can we just get a hand clap for Friday? I made it through the week. I did all my assignments. They were turned in on time. Some of them were like right there. You know, they were due at like three and it was like 2.55, but I turned them all in. <laughs> and so I am here to do a review of a book that I just read, guys. And let me tell you, this book was amazing. The name of this book is Imperfect Arrangements and is by Frances Manash Williams. You guys, I first heard about this book on Pull Down the Moon on her um channel if you have not checked out her channel what are you doing stop what you're doing right now go subscribe and check it out she has two videos on her channel about this book one is like her um review of this book and the other is actually a arthur interview the arthur who worth who wrote this book i can't talk today she's doing an interview with that arthur and both of them are utterly amazing like after you listen to them you're gonna want to go out and buy this book because that is exactly what i did and it's really funny because i bought this book and i didn't know anything about it but what i've heard and i didn't realize it was such a big book um this book is 450 pages I didn't realize it was that big but let me tell you guys this is a 450 page book and I legit read it in like two days so that tells you this book is so good so so good so in this book guys you are following three um women they are all friends you're following Lila Teresa and Manku they are three women who have grown up together as childhood friends you have Teresa who grew up in London but um they're all in Ghana right now so you have Teresa she grew up in London but she used to go to Ghana every holiday to visit her dad you have um Manku who is Lila's cousin and she originally lived in a village in Ghana and moved to Acura the city when she was 10 years old to live with um, Lila and her family because you know her parents couldn't afford to take care of her anymore and then you have Lila who was born bred and raised in Acura and is still living there today and so this book is very interesting you're following their journeys um the women have come back together just recently as adults because Teresa and her husband why can't I think of his name Tyler have decided to move to Ghana kind of like for business opportunities he is also Ghanaian but he has not lived in Ghana since he was 10. He moved to London when he was 10 and now they're back because they heard this is the place to be. So this book had so many good points. Before I start, I'm gonna read you a little section. I like annotate a lot in this book. So I'm gonna read you a little section about from each woman's section. So the way this book is set up, it goes back and forth. So you start out with Teresa and there'll be a chapter about Teresa and then there'll be a chapter from her husband, Tyler's perspective. Then you meet Manku and you'll have the next chapter is from her husband, Norti's perspective. And then you meet Lila and then the next chapter is from her husband, Quasi's perspective. And just let me tell you, um, Manku and Lila's husbands are trash with a capital T. Trash, 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 like trash. They trash. So, yes. Anyway, so yes, um, Teresa's section, this is on page 22, if you have the book. It says, when Tyler ha had hesitantly broached the suggestion that they relocate to Ghana, Teresa had immediately seen it as a pathway to releasing her ambition. Surely in a country where everyone looked like her, she reasoned. The constant slights and thinly veiled suggestions from her bosses to stick with clients who would feel more empathy with her would be a thing of the past no more working harder and putting in longer hours than her blonde haired blue eyed colleagues to prove she was just as good no further need to steal herself to steal herself when greeting new clients who expected an executive with skin color that matched the name Teresa and who then spent the first 10 minutes wondering how to get the agency to assign someone else before it dawned on them she knew her stuff. No more having to deliver twice as much on half the budget available to her colleagues and swallow heavy-handed dollops of patri patronizing praise and barely disguised astonishment that it was the black girl who had done all this. And Ghana, with her two best friends, Lila and Lila's cousin, Maku, to help her settle in, she could start her fresh, build a network in business and across the media, create her own concepts, choose her own clients and be accepted. 
That was the plan until the baby decided to show up. Dum dum dum. So yes, in the first chapter we meet, she is the first person we meet, we read Teresa. And this obviously tells you a little bit about Teresa. She's very apprehensive to move to Ghana, but the thought of being in a place where everyone looks like her and she could excel in her career, is kind of that kick in the butt she needs to say, okay, you know, my husband wants to go, I'm gonna go. And then she finds out she's pregnant and she's like, woo, pump the brakes. I can't be pregnant. Like we just moved to Ghana. I haven't even started up my business. Excuse me. How am I going to have a baby? And that is kind of like where her story takes off. And then my next blurb is going to be from Manku's section. So it says, um, it says, because even greater than her pain and frustration at seeing her professional dreams move out of reach was a quiet, secret longing she had never voiced to anyone. Her overwhelming desire for the recognition and yes, the respect marriage would bring because surely with the baby on the way Norty would marry her and when she was a married woman with a successful husband from a decent family Manku reasoned she would at last be somebody and not just the village girl everyone disparaged so throughout this story um throughout Manku's story she's struggling a lot she grew up in this village until like I said she was 10 she was sent to Acura because her her parents no longer wanted her they were like you're costing us too much money and so she has grown up with this complex of like not being good enough no matter what I do I can never be good enough if I get this really good job like everyone still sees me as this village girl and when she she's very smart she's actually really really good with numbers and she's going to school she finds this guy who she kind of falls head over heels for and boom she becomes pregnant and at this point she stops going to school because she's like I have to um you know take care of this baby her husband well he's not her husband time the guy who got her pregnant, Norty, is very supportive and they have this marriage. But Manku is not happy because they didn't have a big white wedding. They just had this traditional marriage. It was, you know, not big, not grand, not fancy, just kind of like you're getting married because you're pregnant. And so now she is at the point where she has just had her third child, a little girl, Abra. And she is just going back to work and she's offered this... um this scholarship program to take like to go back to school so that she can get a better degree which would cause her to get another job and she's really struggling with how am I supposed to do that like I have all these kids I have this husband there's trash so he don't help me do nothing and but I really need to take this job because we need the money but how am I gonna honestly like take this class when all these things are stacked against me and so that's really interesting and then our last character that we meet is Miss Lila it says, Quasi, that's her husband, was firmly that I'm a traditionalist and I don't do the cooking camp when it came to preparing meals. Ignoring the fact that Lila's demanding senior managerial job offer, off, often had her working long hours. His love of tradition, however, stopped just short of taking on the role of sole provider and forging the healthy and for, foregoing the healthy salary and bonus Lila's job brought home. So then we meet Lila and her husband, I don't know if I'm saying it right, Quasi. So once again, her husband is trash, 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 trash. He was trash from the moment they met. She knew he was trash when she married him. What you will find out when you read this book, I'm not going to give it away because it's kind of like the, oh, this makes so much sense moment. But um, Lila married her husband because of a situation. She was kind of trying to like make amends. For something that she did that she felt was just terrible and by marrying him she was gonna like redeem herself but this man she's marrying is trash she knows he's trash like he's been trash since they were kids and he is still trash and he treats her like crap and she takes it because she feels like this is just my lot in life I have done some terrible things and this is like God punishing me like payback for everything that I have done um this book was amazing, guys. I don't know if you can tell how much I love it. I resonated the most with Maku's story. She reminded me, I guess, so much of myself because I actually decided to go back to school and I have three kids too. And so just hearing her story, how she was struggling, there was one part where they were having a girls night and she was explaining to um Lila and to Teresa, like, I have this job. My job is offering to pay for me to actually take this class but I just can't do it. Who's going to help me with the kids? All these things. And it was, um, oh goodness. I should have, you know, do you hate when you don't like put your bookmark somewhere so I can read it to you guys, but pretty much the gist of it is Teresa and Lila pretty much told her, 
you're gonna have to decide if you're willing to just work hard in order to do this like you're gonna have to forget about Nordy for a second and kind of put yourself first like you've been putting everyone else before you for so long now my cool it's your turn to do it and she does um part of what she does is she decides to um get a lady to come in and start making all of the meals for them because one of the problems is she's like I can't cook and do all these things so she and then she gets her kids into daycare and she does all these things so she's able to do this class and I really really just love that about her and I love this book one thing that I loved about this book it was just a great example of friendship these three women have been friends from the beginning and it kind of showed the evolution of their friendship it touched on so many things it showed what could happen in friendship when you're not honest with each other what happens when you actually like lean into your friendships and those allow you to go to higher heights in your life. It kind of shows how your friends can be there for you when you're at the highest high and the lowest low. And I just, I really love this. And another thing that I loved about this book, this story was set in Ghana. And so it was really interesting to just kind of hear like, how life is in Ghana. One of the things that Teresa struggled with the most is she was like, when they were in London, her and her husband had always been like 50-50 partners. Like everything was like, you know, we're a partnership. And coming into Ghana, how that kind of shifted. And she struggled a lot with that. And like Lila and Manku were in a, in a way, a little insensitive, but they just kept telling her like, that's just life in Ghana. Like this is how men behave in Ghana. You need to get with it. You need to get used to it. You need to realize we're not in London anymore. Like we don't feel bad for you that like these things are happening in your relationship. It is what it is. And so it was just interesting seeing how like she had to evolve as a person and her expectations of what relationship was and what marriage was and how she really had to deal with her own past because a lot of the the issues that she had with that was things surrounding things that happened in her childhood between her mom and dad. She is a product of divorce and she was so afraid of that happening that she almost didn't like open herself up and really allow herself to be in relationship with Tyler. They were in relationship, but not like real relationship, you know? And so that was really interesting. And then, like I said, you have Manku who she just never feels good enough. From the beginning, she's felt like she never feels good enough. Her husband, Nordy's family, treats her like trash. He's trash. They're trash. Trash, 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 trash. I feel like I've said that so much in this uh, review, but he is. But the one shining light is finally, finally, like halfway through the story, Nordy gets his life together. He realizes that he sees all his wife is doing and how hard she's striving for their family. And he is like, oh my gosh, like I'm trash. I don't do anything. Like I need to get with it. And y'all, he gets with it. He gets with it. I'm not going to tell you what happens when he gets with it because that's like the best part, but he does. And then you have Lila and her husband. He never gets with it. But Lila gets with it. She gets herself together and she, she works it out. And it's just winding up being an amazing book. So guys, if you have the opportunity to read this book, please, please, please read it. I promise you, don't let the amount of pages scare you because I'm telling you, when I saw it, I was like, ooh, this is a big book. But it's so good. It's amazing. And if you have read this book, let me know. If maybe from my review, you feel like you might want to read this book, go ahead, um, comment down below. Let me know. Let me know what you think. And don't forget to check out Pull, Pull Down the Moon's channel. I'm going to put her channel in the link below. And I hope you love it. And until next time, guys, bye.